events. Hi everyone, it's Jill Fountain here and I have got with us today Hayley Gray. Hayley, I don't know where to start quite honestly. Now, where did we meet? We met years ago. Oh, well, Ivan, I can remember your youngest was 10. I think he was nine 10. or 10 maybe. I think nine or 10, yeah. So he's now 15, is he? 14. 14, 14. He turned 14 um, yesterday. We have, we have um, there's been a lot, hasn't there? We've done a lot together. And your group, when Women's Entrepreneurs Network, has grown enormously. That must have been pure dedication on your part. So I'm interested to know where, why you started a group that to begin with and what motivated you to just keep going. Yeah. Um, so what motivated me to keep, just keep going is that I'm hard headed. Um, let, let me just start off there. Um, you know, bigger is better. If you give me a goal, um, I'm very task and very goal oriented. So if I have a number um, or if I have a set number of things I have to do, I'm one of those who's going to be like, got it. You know, I'm yeah. so type A that you know, if you say, go do this, do X, Y, Z, and it's going to grow your business and you're going to do these things, I'm going to do it. So at the time I was working with um, a coach and she said, start a Facebook group and inside and grow it. And inside of two years, you'll be a millionaire. Oh, right. One of those coaches. Mm -hmm. So guess what I did? I started a Facebook group. I chose a name that had good SEO, you know, being a computer geek. Yeah. I had to pay attention to the SEO and the search terms. And yeah, I started posting and posting and posting. And I developed a whole process to get people into the group and post everywhere else. And I mean, I hit it hard. And then once we started being able to do Facebook lives, you know, I'm one of those people who said, you know, if you say do one of these, I'm going to do like 12. So I started <laughs> doing Facebook lives every day. Um, you know, and sometimes the if some is good, more is better is not always the best approach. Um, but I'm always one of those, you know, I confess in my life, if some is good, more is better. Um, normal human limits don't always seem to apply. Um, as we were discussing with our Starbucks and caffeine addictions before we got on yes. to this call. It's been a bit of a day. <laughs> yes, we've been running. It, it, I mean, we are completely on the opposite side of the world, aren't we? So, and it's five, well, five hours. I think we're... Quarter of the way. We're five hours in front, aren't, you? aren't we? So mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're quite a way away. But, um, so you... Dear. you also include this with your digital marketing as well isn't it it's not just one hat you've got on it's a multitude of hats right so one of the things I did you know when I started is um, and Meg says it's not a coffee addiction it's committed relationship oh well done, Meg. Thank very you. well um, you know so I started doing just social media management and business coaching and I have a lot of experience with growing businesses, selling them. And, um, you know, between the education with the MBA from Duke, um, with a concentration in entrepreneurship and innovation, it's just like a particular like niche that I choose to focus on. And, um, you know, I did it to start growing my business. What I didn't expect was how fast the group was going to grow. Um, and some of the attendant like craziness that comes out of that. So it, it's been interesting um, trying to grow the group, you know, and then now as the group has gotten bigger, um, you know, focusing on ways to help other people. But my primary business now is doing digital marketing because I swore up one side and down the other, I wouldn't do any more websites after I left my corporate job in 2013. Oh, really? I was not going to be a programmer anymore. I was done with being a programmer. How did I've been a help? programmer for a lot of years. Yeah, it didn't work. Um, <laughs> Because people would keep coming to me going, I know that you have a background in software engineering. 
Um, and I know that you know all this marketing stuff and this social media stuff. Can you just finish my website or can you just fix this? And so I actually did a lot of um, user interface development, website stuff when I was in my corporate jobs. Um, at IBM, I was working on Java, J2EE, um, doing a lot of portlets, applets, servlets, you know, applications that, you know, pop up and run remotely and do stuff on your computers and do things. Um, doing a lot of really kind of crazy, um, and this is where I'm probably gonna lose you guys, um, SNMP network monitoring stuff remotely. Um, so I had a ton of that like software engineering development user interface experience with that like back end hardcore development. Um, yeah. And so I swore I wouldn't do it anymore. Um, I love it, but it's something that is so brain intensive. It requires a lot of braining mm -hmm. um, and a lot of thought. So it, it was just one of those things that I really wasn't focusing on. And I started to see how people would come to me with this and then they would come to me with this and then they'd have this problem over here. And it, it, it's kind of like the human body, you know, our businesses, our marketing, everything is very interconnected. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's a reason why um, when a horse, you know, it used to be like when a horse broke a leg, they would shoot the horse because of the inner connectedness yeah. of that. And, um, you know, what I started to see was that people would do a piece here and then they would do a piece there and then they'd come back and they'd be asking me about, do I need to do this Google my business thing or do I need to be doing this or do I need to be doing that? And no single part of our marketing and our businesses exists in a vacuum. Right. And it, it needs to tie into our operations. I mean, that's the part that like, nobody seems to really talk about is that, you know, if you're not paying attention to what does the whole life cycle of the client start to look like, you know, A to B to C to D to E to F, how are you going to um, be able to market effectively to them? How are you going to be able to manage and serve that client? Yeah. And it, it does all have to join together, doesn't it? People, like you say, they think they can do this bit and this bit and then all the rest of it will work and it doesn't. No. And um, a lot of times, you know, they're just missing key components, right? You're missing the ligaments and the bones and, yeah. you know, the connective tissues to, to make everything connect together. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Google My Business there. That's something that you and I both harp on about, but I yeah. think it's an amazing tool amazing way of gathering that people that you wouldn't normally gather mm -hmm. yeah it's and it um, does amazing things for your search engine optimization yeah so getting found on google is highly dependent you know on you know posting on your google my business i mean it's not always only google my business obviously that's not the only thing out there but if I could say, do this one thing and you're gonna get found much more often on Google, it's frequently just fill out your Google My Business yeah. profile and then connect Google Analytics to your website. And if you do those two things, and they're two different things, they're not the same yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, just because um, they put Google in front of them, it doesn't mean to say they're the same thing. No, but, but you know, you just start doing those simple things that are free. You don't have to pay somebody a ton of money to do them either. Um, yeah. That's the other thing like big scam out there, you know, you'll get this random call from a stranger saying, Hey, I want to charge you, you know, $500 to set up your Google, my business account. Mm. When you can do it yourself in 10 minutes. Yeah. And get it verified. And the verification sometimes comes through in 10 minutes, but sometimes you have to wait for a postcard. Oh, guess what? That's three days. Sometimes it's a bit longer because things go a little bit wrong, but mostly it's around about three to five days. Yeah. It's and sometimes you don't get the postcard the first time and you ask for a new one, but wow. it's not crazy hard, you know? No, no, it isn't. And I guess that's where the social proofing comes in as well, because we all talk about making yourself stand out and visibility. And it is about that social proofing that you need on the search engines, which is where your SEO comes into it as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. And then that, you know, and then the search engine optimization, 
you know, your ham bone leads to your neck bone. You know, it's just like all the pieces. <laughs> And it all works together. And I see people spending, you know, money on Google ads, but not doing anything with their SEO. Oh, do you know, I cannot tell you what, if I go back to my toy days, I cannot, I don't even want to admit how much I flushed on Google ads because I just didn't, I thought I understood it and then it changed and then it kept on changing. I couldn't keep up with it and I was spending a fortune every month. And I was converting business, I was, but not to the extent that I should have been for that amount mm -hmm. of money. Well, and it, that's part of that business operations piece. You've got to understand how much is a client worth to you? How much are they going to spend? Yeah. So how much are you willing to spend to acquire a client? Now, if a client is going to come to you and they're going to spend $20 in one go and that's all they're ever going to spend with you, well, then you probably should not be spending $50 to acquire a client. But if that client is going to spend $10 a month every month for the next four years, yeah, it might be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about your summits because I, I know about your summits because I've been on a few of them, but um, when is your next one? So my next big summit is um, April 15th through the 17th. Um, we do two summits a year. It's onesummit.com, W-E-N-S-U-M-M-I-T.com. Um, and this one in April is gonna be focusing on mastering your business mindset. The one in September is September 23rd through the 25th. That one is on social selling. Right. And, you know, it's it's a very different skill set. Um, people think that, oh, I can just come online and I can post and everybody's going to love me. That was my first thought. Didn't quite work out that way. So we, we I do know the answer to this, but your favorite or your most popular post that gets the most popular responses. There's one, you know, you use, there's one silly one that you use that does that's a funny one that people do hold on to. Two that people really glam on to. One is what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? <laughs> yes. The other one, which gets more responses, is toilet paper over or under. Can't believe it. And people will argue about toilet paper over or under. Yeah. I've seen it happen. It's it, hysterical, isn't it? It, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. And you've got your group is up at seventy-two thousand members now. Yeah. How many admins do you have to run that size of business? Because it's something you cannot do by yourself. It it's, must be impossible. No, so we have about 40 volunteer admins, and then we have two full-time people. Wow. And then we have some people that we do trades with, and, you know, we have different arrangements with different people to get the kind of volunteer and hours and manpower into that group to keep it under control and behaving. Yeah, the keeping it under control and behaving is a major effort. I mean, 72,000 members with 35 to 40,000 of them active at any given point in time. It's a lot of people. And it's nothing unusual for somebody to put a post up and get a couple of thousand reach easily, isn't it? Is it in your that group? is correct, yes. Um, what? I think one lady said the other day that they'd got thousands. They'd reached thousands of people because they understood mm -hmm. the algorithms. Because, And I think... Am I right in saying that you're doing a course on algorithms or something soon? Mm -hmm. I am getting ready to release an e-course on social media planning and algorithms. Yep. And then we're going to talk about in, we're going to talk about an overview of algorithms so you kind of understand what they are and what they are not. And then we're going to talk about working with the algorithms on each particular platform. You see that to me is a gold. It's wonderful because I'm on social media quite a lot. But I still don't understand the algorithms. I get a little bit of an inkling now and then. And I, there's some of it I remember, but really getting into how they work, it's a mystery right. still. Well, it's all a computer programmer. It, it's just, it's all one big fat computer program where they're just applying sets of rules to 
you know, actions, right? So if you do this, then this happens. If you do this, then that happens. And, you know, they look for particular keywords, they look for particular things. But the other thing that they're trying to do is be very aware of each individual user and what they want to see. So what the algorithm is attempting to do is somebody puts up a post and then they're trying to decide who gets to see that post first based on what they want to see. Yeah. And then they're showing it to those people as a test. And if those people react, then it's going to show that post to more people who they think want to see that particular post. And so that widens out. That it widens out. The more engagement you get on that post, the more people who see that post. Because some of the posts that I get, I, I look at it later and I've had five, it's reached five people. Oh, totally. And others, I go, oh, actually, that one's done quite well. Well, but, you know, and they, Facebook does throttle anything that mentions Clubhouse. They throttle anything that's got links in it, oh. it drives you off the site. Because remember, Facebook makes money from advertising. Yes. And their ultimate goal is to keep you on Facebook all day, every day, interacting in the app, doing your thing. In so groups, mention, in pages, on your yeah. page. So if you mention Clubhouse or LinkedIn or Twitter, or are, they like, are they likely to just go, no, that's not, they recognize those words. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. if you have a link to an external website, yeah, they're, they're oh, much yeah. more likely to show that post to a lot fewer people. Yeah. Now, tell me about Facebook jail. Um, have you ever been in Facebook jail to start? Oh, totally. <laughs> I've been in Facebook jail lots of times. Usually it's because I'm typing too fast and the algorithm starts to think that I'm a bot because I type eh, over 100 words a minute. Um, so if I'm typing in responses to something like one of the times I ended up in Facebook jail, I literally was responding to people that were wishing me a happy birthday. Oh no. And I got in trouble for responding to people that were wishing me a happy birthday. So I have learned like, and I got in trouble one time because I was offering to review people's social media pages and I ended up in Facebook jail. So what I learned is you can only respond so fast. So if you can type certain fast or you can copy and paste, don't do that because you might get in trouble. Um, slow it down to a more human pace of how a human would be typing maybe on a phone and go for that kind of a rate of response. Um, then, you know, the other things that get you in trouble for Facebook jail are copying and pasting the same message to a bunch of people in your messenger. Yeah. Um, that's always a crowd pleaser. Um, every algorithm, not just Facebook, LinkedIn does it, Instagram does it, Twitter does it. Um, I've talked to developers and they all confirm that the algorithms are basically the same on, you know, from that respect on every single platform and it's going to flag you and you're going to be limited. Um, if you have violations that violate copyright, like um, music or those kinds of things that can land you in Facebook jail and get your posts pulled down. It can also get your account shut down. Wow. Um, even, even if you post um, like a link on to a music on YouTube or something like that, will it take it or will it? It will, will sometimes put like you in jail. If you do it yeah. too much, you'll get put in jail. Yeah. Wow. Do all the things that we take for granted that we can do and we really can't. And we it's getting can, it, slowly. Slow. Wow. Do you know, do you type slow? You, I don't, I can't type slow. Right. But no, I can't. You, learn, don't you? you have to do, learn how to monitor it. Um, it's so don't I, act like a bot and don't be a spammer. Yes, don't don't act as if you're a computer, basically. Wow, the you have to make the algorithm think that you're a human. You have to, yeah, that's right. And I think uh, there's some we do have some that ha do actually lose their Facebook pages and their groups. So can they they lose their account. And this is where you have to take off. You have to draw people away from Facebook and get them onto your database. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's so tricky, right? It's tricky. Um, yeah. You know, so there's things you can do with your Facebook group, like asking people for their email address when they join. Mm -hmm. But once you hit that accept button, if you haven't recorded that email address anywhere, you're SOL. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's important. I mean, I tell people all day long, someday Facebook may decide that they don't like you. And we know somebody who got their account shut down permanently by Facebook. And, you know, it sucks. It really, really sucks. But there's, I've seen more people that have had their accounts shut down by Facebook or their group shut or whatever. So you have to take your lists and you have to work. Yeah, because if this is your main area of work, you are actually losing a business. Yeah, you can totally you can, lose your business. You can lose your business, can't you? You can lose your entire livelihood and all of your income. But not only that, if you haven't taken note of the people that you've been talking to on a daily basis, you actually lose the companionship as well. Because mm -hmm. a lot more of our, although we work our uh, accounts as a business, a lot of it is through friendship as well, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you have to have them on multiple platforms and multiple ways to contact people. Yeah, yeah. So what have you got coming up next? Because I know you've got your networking event on Thursday. Tomorrow. That's it. Yeah, tomorrow is Thursday. I've got the when networking event coming up at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern. So 6 o'clock your time. Yes. I've 10, got it in 10 a.m. Pacific. I've, yeah, I've actually checked today to make sure that I'm in because the last time it was such fun. Yeah. It was so good. I enjoyed it. I had, I had a whale of a time. Yeah. Yeah, we all did actually, even because we you put us into breakout rooms a little bit longer than what I'm used to. And we said, you know, having those extra minutes into breakout rooms really made a difference. And people got mad at me for pulling them back out of the, the breakout rooms, <laughs> even after 15 minutes. It was like, sorry. <laughs> but we were just having so much fun. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I know. Oh, well, look, thank you so much for coming on this evening. And, or thank my you evening. Having me. Thank you so much. I am going, to, I actually, in about 20 minutes, I'm going to, be, or 30 minutes, I'm going to be on inside your group doing When Live. And that's so, awesome. Wonderful. Thank you, every, everyone, for watching today. Do put a comment in if you come back later. Um, hashtag replay, and we'll pick up any comments. But thank you very much, Hayley, for joining us today. It's been brilliant. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Bye-bye.